So, I finally did the deed. I made my own journal! And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how I created this, why I created this, and what it's for. Let's get started. So you probably know I've been journaling for a very long time, but the first time I actually picked up a journal was when I was 13. So it's already been 15 years since, and over the past few years, I've been experimenting here and there on the sizes, the way I document, what to write about, what to talk about, what stories I am putting inside every single journal I own. By now, I probably have like 30 to 50 journals. I've lost count, but it's definitely brought me into a new avenue of self-discovery, especially because I'm an introvert. And that's the main reason why I really, really love journaling. No one can judge you except yourself maybe but you know you have a place to actually write them down and i think in the latter years i've developed that sort of habit of decorating my journals thanks to the discovery of Hobonichi. so a lot of things happened in 2016 it's been five years that year summit books my publisher told me that she wanted a book about journaling she was like abby we want you to write a book about journaling. I was like, are you kidding me right now? I have been journaling for years on end and this opportunity did not come at a better time. So in my head, I was like, okay, cool. But also I wasn't sure if I knew what journaling was about. That was also the same year that I started to discover more of Japanese stationery. I felt like it was, you know, getting its mainstream exposure i found out about the traveler's notebook i think that's the first year i got my traveler's notebook and then i also discovered the wonders of this thing called the hobonichi so my friend and i went to loft and we got our hobonichi techo this was the spring edition kind of matches my outfit today but it was very thick i really really enjoyed this so during the time that i was working on the book i also did a lot of research into the different types of documenting style so in some way I personally enjoyed the habit of journaling and at the same time researching about the said topic because at the time it was also not as popular as it is now. I think also in some way the community was just starting to develop back then like everyone wasn't into journals but they were getting into it trying to figure out what's the best way to document, how to write about their stories. So a few months later in September of 2016 this came out. This is my book. It's called The ABCs of Journaling. It's my second book. It also became a bestseller. And we actually created the book to make it look like a journal. Creating this book was such a treat. It was also very, very tiring. I probably had experienced my first wave of imposter syndrome working on this book. So I did illustrate a lot because I also have coincidentally gotten into travel journaling. I think I got into travel journaling first, but bringing it into daily was kind of the challenge that i was getting into as much as i was writing this book a lot of things also came into play like i learned how to create different prompts you know there were actually activities here at the back as well we also featured a lot of local artists who have been journaling one of my favorite artist is Skuya Robert who inspired me to actually do travel journaling so this book came out and then a month later this journal came out so I felt like they were like the love theme of the year so this is the ABC daily journal I created it in partnership with a paper company called IFEX so it's stitch bound and it lays flat and this is actually a very old copy this is probably my second one but you know back then I was really into like making my journals very thick I felt like there was also a lot of things that I liked to document and sometimes I would write very long entries like this and then I would also stick stuff mostly sticking stuff and actually creating this journal was high-key inspired by the Hobonichi so instead of having them dated this is actually 1 to 31 with no months but it's good for 12 months that's why it's really really thick and I really like this before because you know it really helped me hone the habit of journaling regularly and finding the beauty in every day. 
So, you know, 2020 happened and at that time, I had already plans of creating a monthly journaling challenge so that's why the 2020 creative journaling challenge came about where every month there are actually 20 prompts that you can choose from and you can journal about you can journal 20 of them or you can journal 10 of them or two of them or one of them and it's totally fine also that same year we would do themed ones like i think there was a harry potter one specifically in september so it was really nice to share these different prompts i also found out that i like thinking of prompts for some reason and that really brought me into the idea of creating prompts and sharing it with other people who wanted to try out journaling. So actually for my lettering book and journaling books, both of them have prompts and we had challenges before. So I kind of wanted to bring that back now with journaling and not you know, specifically tied into a specific book. So I guess you could say from 2017 to 2019, 2020, I was, you know, I was journaling all the time, trying out different styles. So you're probably wondering, where did I come up with the term, the diarist? So if you Google it, it's actually a real term. It is a person who writes in a diary. And it was actually one of the tiers initially for my Patreon. So my Patreon tiers are named after specific people not people types creative types so you have the rookie the dreamer the maker the student and the artist back then i had added the diarist as one of the tiers not the student there was actually a lot of changing up towards my first few months because i wasn't really sure if i wanted like six tiers five tiers eventually now i have five and in place of the diarist now is actually the student so back then the diarist tier i think i just did it for a month and then i stopped but it would have exclusive journaling videos and more journaling related stuff basically so as i went on to manage my patreon which i still am so if you want to check out our art club go to patreon.com slash abc link in the description for more info i decided to host a journaling hangout for the maker tier and that really put a lot of things into perspective because i love journaling but i love it even more if i could journal with other people all together at the same time and the fun part about the hangouts is i usually share a specific theme or prompt and then we talk about the process and then there's like a q a and like a conversation exchange in the chat and that really helped me also come up with this product so the diarist came from a tier and it's now an actual product I also want to talk about the misconception that people think having a journal is supposed to mean you're supposed to decorate and decorate and that's it. I mean, in some way, yes, if you want to do that, but it's really up to you. So I tend to look at journaling still as a form of storytelling, writing your own story. That's why the tagline is write your own story. And when I was developing the product, I actually had a lot of very particular things I wanted to point out. The first one is... I wanted it to be fully customizable. I didn't want to impose any like ABC branding or except my name at the back. And then the second one was I wanted it to be a very no frills kind of journal. It's not going to be the type where you don't want to use it. I get it. Sometimes you buy a new notebook and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so intimidating. It's so nice. I don't want to use it. That's not the point. You're supposed to use the journal, right? So instead of coming up with so many ideas, I had to narrow it down. So the first few pages of the diarist have all the prompts. And then the remaining pages are free pages for you to write and to document and to stick stuff and to journal it however you like. So why did I decide on making a journal this year? I don't know. I feel like it's now or never because... I have wanted to do this. I mean, I had made the ABC Dirty Journal and it's actually not something I paid for production-wise. My biggest issue actually for the past few years was I wasn't 100% dedicated to shop work because I had my freelance work. I was also working on books. I still am working on a book now, but what happens is a lot of my job has been shifted. So now I'm 50% shop 50 percent patreon somewhere there is the book and managing the community and this youtube channel but anyway it was always a challenge for me because i didn't know if i had enough money to pay for production and when you're making journals like this you can't just make like 50 at least for me i had 350 made 
and it's a lot of money and it, it was really haunting me like the thought of it I'm like how can I pay for that but since I started my patreon last year I felt like I had enough money to get from the pledges and at the same time you know the shop just boomed over the past year and I'm really really grateful for that and also it's the fifth year of the shop so I felt like it was a nice way to also celebrate the fifth year of the shop sometimes I don't realize how much long I've already been working <laughs> and it's it's kind of cool at the same time it's kind of like oh my gosh you've been doing this for like six years tops I sought the help of my really good friend and layout queen Christine of Everyday Explorers Co so she designed the layout inside with my input of course and the icons you see on the journal are actually my font it's my ABC Webdings font and I use that specifically for all the products I create I think in hindsight one of the biggest things that I've learned while creating this product was actually the fact that I should trust my own instincts and follow the decisions that I make. Apart from me making the decisions, I did actually ask my younger sister, Burn. You can check out her TikTok at Burfolio. She does bullet journaling. And I wanted also her input because she sees things from a different perspective. And while I was creating the journal, a lot of things I wanted to consider was the fact that it was really a universal notebook that anyone can use, even the colors and also the design, it didn't seem too overpowering. It's just barely there and it's really up to you on how you can decorate it. So here are some behind the scenes clips of producing the journal. I do hope you enjoy it. So this is the swatches for the spine. And when I was choosing, actually, I have wanted this Blanco color. It, it's a bit like cream and it's neutral. Also has the same energy as the Midori, but I didn't want it to be purely white. It also looks like the Hobonichi Cousin. My other option was either to use this craft, which is like a, you know, very typical neutral brown color, which I think would work. But part of me was like, wait, I think having like, a mustard color would be very like signature abbey so i ended up getting this ochre so it ended up looking like this in the mock-up which is great there's also a bit of texture here and basically this is paper but it looks like fabric hence tela that's filipino for i guess spanish also for cloth this is kind of the spine that i really really liked and I'm glad it turned out the way it did. So initially, I had wanted the diaries to look like this. And I wanted to have outlines. I don't know, it kind of framed the image a little bit. And it was gonna have a dark brown spine because this was what I was given in terms of the swatches. And I wanted to get either this but it felt too light or this dark color because there weren't really other options. So initially, this was what I had in mind. And then the belly band would be either rust orange or a nice, like, mustardy. This came out orange, though, color. And then there would be this hand using a pencil drawing or, like, documenting, which is going to be, like, the trademark logo for this. And then I was debating also on the colorway of the cover itself, if it would be more beigey or more, like, white-ish like dirty white oat color so then i settled with this but i had to ask a couple of my friends like is the border actually nice because i was like you know i kind of wanted it to feel like it had some sort of structure but you know honestly i didn't really go for it towards the end these are the two samples like before and after version so this is the before something felt off with it and I feel like I was too constricted with the dark brown spine. And then when I started to have options, I was like, you know, this one could actually work. And I personally have been using this Cooper light font for a very long time. So I think it made sense to use that. I quickly wanted to show you what the inside pages looked like. So these were laid out by Christine. Initially, we were debating if the pages would be like neutrally colored like this. Or this was the other option, which was 
full color. I found this to be more striking because when someone flips through the journal, it would make sense to have like more distinction of color for the different types of prompts because you have dailies, you have weekly prompts, you also have monthly prompts and general prompts and I wanted to have like a distinction for each page. And then this is a sample of the first part which is like a little dedication from me which is really cute because these are actually my fonts. They're my font. It's a font. And then I, I had um, Christine like scatter them all over and then this, I really wanted to have a how to use this journal page because when I make my books, I have a how to use this book page. So I was like, how to use this journal? And then I listed down some key things that should be taken account of while journaling or getting into the journal. So this is a sample page plan. I do have a this diary belongs to intro and then we ended up doing four pages of prompts because initially I was thinking of having the prompts situated in the middle parts of the book but I didn't know if that was actually optimal in my case because when I'm using a journal, I want it to be continuous like I don't want any breakers in between. It's not a planner anyway. Actually, when you get a Midori like this, there's nothing inside. So basically, the pages and you're good to go. So with that, I was like, you know, I didn't end up doing these breakers that were back to back. They were also a bit challenging to do. So in the end, I just added like a back page for the about page, copyright, and like QR codes and other information that would be needed to promote more about the book or like know more about journaling and stuff. This is the sticker sheet sample. This is actually half of the final one. So initially, I wanted the stickers to have color but these are clear actually and then i was like you know maybe having them clear makes more sense so this is the final one they correspond to different things depending on what you want to journal about i also made prompts like these which you can find inside the journal so it sort of made sense depending on what you want to journal about and of course i went for the typical warm colors that you can see throughout the book so this is the box mock-up. I want to quickly show you how I ended up with this design because I had a hard time actually debating on what to design for my box. So this is going to be the flap and I'm going to have a sticker made here. And then there's going to be like a simple grid pattern and then this is beige. And then the side flaps have similar icons to the stickers because as I mentioned, it's a font. And then the side flap and the back would be like the mustard yellow. And then on the front, you have this wording that says, write your own story. And then for the inside, I had it coated. Initially, I was gonna do like a white, but since the journal itself was beige, I wanted something striking. So this is a rust colorway, and then it matches the sticker. So I think that would be a great like coordination of all the different color schemes that I'm using. I marked it here because I needed to know it and it really helps to print everything i find that having all of these have really helped me fully understand how the, this project comes along and i've always been very particular about seeing colors in print versus on the screen because you know seeing it in real life is really really i don't know necessary at least for me so yeah that's it for this video i do hope you enjoyed watching me talk about creating products i feel like as much as i run a shop the core of what i do as a creative is to really hopefully inspire you on your own creative journey and help you get to where you want to be through the products through the patreon art club through my posts and videos and yeah the diaries is now available so you have this journal and it actually has four sticker sheets included because I care about stickers and these are clear stickers. I specifically made them clear because we like clear stickers and there's actually prompts here that you can use based off of the prompts inside the pages. And then I also have every diarist order come in a nice box which took me ages to design and it looked so simple. So 
I really have a lot of self-doubt when it comes to design work. So if you're not from the Philippines, I do have a form for international orders available for patrons $3 and up at the Dreamer tier on my Patreon. So it just might take a while to ship because we also have a lot of restrictions here, but it should get to you safely. Thank you for watching this video and I'm probably gonna show you some pack with me videos soon, maybe. And of course, please look forward to journaling videos and journal with me videos using my own journal. Oh my gosh, it's like, can't believe this is happening. And I don't wanna be biased, but I actually already started journaling on The Diarist and I really like the experience. That's something I don't say a lot in all of the journals I've used, so. That's probably my biased self-talking, but you know, you gotta love your own products. I wanna give a shout out to all of the loyal patrons and customers who have supported my creative endeavors because this production of these journals, 350 of them, would not be possible without your help. Thank you and always be creative.